<laughs> okay. Uh, good morning again, everyone. My name is Chinapong Ang Sushot Meti. I'm from Thailand, but my nickname is Dia. So in in the laboratory, my everyone everyone call me Dia. Every Thai people we have nickname because our full name is too long. Chinapong Ang Sushot Meti. Why Dia? Dia. And why Dia? Dia. Every Thai people we have nicknamed by birth, but given by family. In ah, my case, it's Dia. Chinapong <laughs> too. There's Didn't nothing related. Didn't see relationship yeah. with Dia. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, PhD, I'm a PhD student here, and I'm, I'm on my fourth year already. And normally my my final defense exam, the student notes, will be in next month. Ah. So the subject of my thesis is a, a semantic based framework for complex event modeling and detection in multimedia sensor network. For this topic, I work with my advisor, Professor Richard Chabelle, which is here. And then I work with, <laughs> I work with two more, two more advice, two more co-advisor. First is Professor Judith Cardinal from, from Uni University of Simon Bolivar in Venezuela. And the second is, second co-advisor is Professor Shohei Yokoyama from Japan, Chisuoka University. I work with both of them when they are on their sabbatical year here in our lab in our laboratory. So uh, here's just the outline of my presentation. First, I'm going to give some quick overview about uh, what is multimedia sensor network and complex event processing again. And next, uh, we are going to review some related studies. And after that, I'm going to present my approach. My approach is called C. CEMID, I call it CMIT framework, which is an abbreviation of a complex event modeling and detection framework for multimedia sensor network. And then, okay, let's begin. Just before we get into detail, first of all, what is multimedia sensor network? The definition of multimedia sensor network, just the sim simple, is just a network of inter interconnected multimedia sensor and optionally scalar sensor. To what is sensor actually? Sensor, uh, if, we, if we talk about, if we talk with engineer, they would think that sensor is a device, a small device, a small device like temperature sensor or motion sensor. But nowadays, sensor technology develops a lot. We have sensor everywhere. 
telephone can can also be sensor, camera can be can also be sensor, internet, software, everything can be a sensor. So multimedia sensor network is basically the study on how can we interconnect all the multimedia sensor together to to collect data and detect some events, what's going on inside, and how can we take this event to facilitate user. Maybe you also prefer the media, video, sound. Uh, in general, when we talk about generate. multimedia, we talk about video, image, audio. Yeah, yeah. But when in this work, we were going to cover up to, by our definition, we're going to cover up to some, some, something like electronic document, website, PDF. But okay, for the current experiment, we doesn't go up to that. But the definition goes up to that. Go so basically. Uh, basically, we instead of referring to only video, image, audio, we refer to a non-scalar data. Whatever scalar uh, the data is non-scalar, we would call it multimedia. Mm -hmm. But most, yeah. Uh, are the sensors embedded in the documents, or is it the equipment that is uh, uh, doing users on the data? Uh, excuse me. I okay. didn't hear well. Yeah. Uh, when you are saying sensor, is it embedded in the documents? Or uh, is it uh, the equipment, uh, the infrastructure, infrastructure that is analyzing the document? Uh, basically, uh, both case are has to be support in our case, because basically, in uh, be for when we talk about multimedia sensor network, w there are hardware layer, okay. communication layer, and then semantic layer. The 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 layer for translating what happened. The what basically in this case we are in this work we are focusing on semantic layer. So the, your question, if I understand correctly, is more or less on the on the low, low lower layer on the how things are interconnected. Is it, is it needed to do spe something special on the documents, or uh, is it uh, a classical documents that will be analyzed? By the, the system, I mean. Uh, yeah, the, the the framework will be we will analyze. So basically, okay, the, so the incoming okay, so, so if it can uh, simply the input is raw raw multimedia data and raw okay. scalar sensor data, raw da raw sensor data, output okay. would be complex event. Okay. Yeah. So basically, everything go. So it's just that the framework doesn't uh does it is the semantic the semantic framework. So the the we assume that all the hardware base uh, the all the hardware connection are already handled. Yeah. At the lower level, okay. yeah. So just a quick summary: of what's the difference between scalar sensor and multimedia sensor in term as a device? As a device, normally scalar sensor, de device size small, use low power, can produce only some simple data, like numeric or text. But in multimedia sensor case, it can produce like video, audio, image, numeric or text. And the device size, right now, the, the multimedia, for example, multimedia sensor device is something like Raspberry Pi device, the ARM V7 based device, ARM V9 based device. These two, these kind of devices are basically telephone, a big telephone or smart device, smart object, the, the one that used by LG, this one. And what is complex event? Before going to what is complex event, we have to check what is atomic event first. Basically event, we can categorize event into two types, atomic event and complex event. The definition of what is atomic event literally according to complex event processing research group. There is a, a, com a big community called complex event processing research group. They define atomic event as an atomic, an atomic event or a simple event is an event that is not viewed as summarizing or representing or denoting a set of other events, but in a simple English is that an atomic event is just a smallest unit of event where we can detect by using just, for example, one single reading of a sensor. Something like we take one temperature sensor and we read one value. If the value is higher than 30, mean we have atomic event high hot temperature, something like, for example. Why complex event is more or less an abstraction of multiple events altogether. Something like an event, uh, uh, an atomic event, fast wind speed, com combining with an atomic event, rainstorm. Uh, uh, rainstorm. When we combine both together, it may mean that an, a, a, a complex event uh, depression, for example. Basically, complex event, okay, in short, complex event is an abstraction of multiple events. 
why atomic event is a smallest unit of an event where we can detect by using only one reading one value and what is complex event processing the complex event processing engine complex event processing work aim to try to match a stream of atomic event to detect complex event according to a predefined pattern so basically to detect complex event first of all we need to have a predefined pattern and from that predefined pattern we apply the predefined pattern into an incoming stream of atomic event to detect complex event just in short uh, just a short overview about what is complex event processing engine technology the motivating scenario why we need to detect complex why we need to detect co complex event in multimedia sensor network the example scenario that we keep and it's also the, the basis of the experiment of this work is a smart office because nowadays in an office we have a lot lots of kind of sensor equipped for example the, the example scenario that i did we have one video camera one uh, we have video camera everywhere we have computer with computer we can detect so many stuff like okay how many process run inside the system and we have live sensor and we have temperature sensor installed and from this kind of office there are so many events that we can detect some complex some atomic for example uh, for user complex event normally complex event different different kind of user concern on different kind of complex event for example user or employee they may want uh, the employee work in the office so they may want to detect uh, the, the system may need to detect that okay the, the light is too bright for them to work so we need to detect that okay an employee is currently currently working while the light is too bright you can say that okay this kind of event is already can can already be done by using simple light sensor simple light sensor where to detect that okay if the light is too bright and there is some motion sensor going on it means that okay people are already working but imagine that okay in the same office if we have another employee that is currently participating in video conferencing session so for maybe, maybe in this case the people who is participating in video conference, conferencing session they will prefer the, the light to be a little bit lower so in this case we have two complex event two different complex event first complex event is that uh, one employee want to want the light want to adjust the light in the office to be bright bright enough to work and another kind of employee want the light in the office to be a little bit low because they are in video conferencing session so this kind of, this kind of case is new because the existing system can only detect that is there a person in the room and is the light in the room is bright or not there is no current system that detect up to the detail of the pattern of even the pattern the actual pattern use usage pattern of user and the user in high role manager they may want to check whether people in the office is uh in in, in the office is currently a normal situation or not or is there someone try to hack into the system or is there some thief getting inside the office or not but from this scenario just okay to the challenge and requirement that we can extract that what is what necessary what necessary for detect for for us to uh, to be able to detect complex event in multimedia sensor network that first of all we need to be able to model infrastructure of the sensor network where we not because in here in this case we need to be able to model that okay we have one camera located here one computer located on which table uh light sensor temperature sensor located where in the office so first of all the first requirement we need to be able to model infrastructure of the multimedia sensor network modeling infrastructure uh include the uh, cover up to the model the modeling of the capacity of the sensor something like this sensor is a video camera this sensor is a microphone this sensor is a light sensor second case is do we need to be able to model multimedia sensor data yeah. well, just a question do you yeah. model also the environment for yeah. example this uh, sensor is a video and mm -hmm. the coverage of the video is uh, this uh, yeah yeah that, that's so that's this is also part of the modeling yeah. Yeah, exactly. So basically, we need to model. In short, we need to be able to model. Okay, we have which sensor install where, and it cover which area, mm. and then we need to be able to model, uh, 
uh, the data, the data. Okay, with what what is this capture? Is it capture video and what is in what is inside the video? Is mm. it capture an audio and what mm. is this audio is about? Mm. Something like that. And so do you, and do you want to use this for example to see that uh, uh, the building is fully covered is fully covered by uh, yeah by a video system or this kind of stuff or do you, I mean do you have some kind of specification or constraints that uh, we, 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 we make this work generic we make this work generic but we pick smart office just to illustrate but in, in practice mm -hmm. we can in install this wherever we can use whether video camera or audio or microphone or whatever and everything we make this generic to application domain mm -hmm. yeah so there's no fixed specification about it as long as it produces data we, we can use it so yeah here's the requirement in short we have six requirements we have to model infrastructure multimedia data we need to be able to model event structure both atomic and complex event case and we need to be able to detect event in a near real time case and in an offline case in case imagine where the data is already stored and we need to query it back and then we need to be able to work in different kind of application domain this related study uh, the current right now to date uh, to uh, to the base of our knowledge for our current literature review so far there is no existing study or existing system that focus precisely on processing complex events in multimedia sensor network. There are some work that focus on complex event processing, but it focus on business, for mm -hmm. example. There is another work that focus on sensor network modeling, but it cannot do anything about event detection or multimedia data processing. And there is also the work that focuses on multimedia data modeling, but they cannot do anything about sensor network modeling or complex event detection. Just to see quickly about the existing approach, uh, first of all, the, the sensor network modeling. There are several approaches that can be used for modeling sensor network. And we can categorize quickly into three groups. First of all, first is the relational database. In short, uh, these people they propose a schematic for modeling sensor network infrastructure by using relation relational table. So most of them they use MySQL or TinyDB. Some work use centralized approach. <laughs> approach. Some work use distributed approach. And the second is the graph database approach. Graph database approach in short is uh, is another approach for modeling data where where a data is modeled as a node. Instead of modeling data as a table, they model data as a node. And with this node is connected to another node to some to some link relation as a graph. And the, and the third approach is ontology-based <coughs> approach. Ontology-based approach is more or less uh, a graph database with semantic information. So, in, so when we look at this, more, more, most likely ontology-based approach is the way to go because we, we can have more meaningful semantic information from here. So in ontology-based approach, we, there are several existing studies that propose uh, that no, excuse me, I'm the MBU today, sorry. <laughs> I have ear infection, but I can't even hear my voice well, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's in uh, the hospital. This sorry. workshop is a hospital. I can't <laughs> even hear my voice well, sorry. Maybe you uh, should start it virtually. Only your sorry. people are in good health. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so basically ontology oh, for I modeling rest? sensor network Pretty are sure there good. some some ontology are application specific. Some ontology are generic. The application specific ontology they designate and their ontology dedicate to smart building application, for example, or micro grid application, or marine data or marine image sensing application. But there are some ontology that propose a generic ontology for modeling sensor network in general. For, but the more the notable one is called semantic sensor network or SSN ontology. This one is proposed by uh, by. The uh, W Consortium, mm -hmm. and this group they gather the aspect of all existing ontology all together into one ontology. We have to take a look quickly of the ah the image is so clear. Sorry, the semantic sensor network ontology in short they separate the, their ontology into several concepts for modeling for modeling uh, every aspect of the sensor network. For example, the, the core part they say the sensor is a system and sensor produce data data as an ideal literal and sensor observe some 
observable property and the system has some system capability survival range operating range so basically in short it cover most of the aspect of modeling sensor network but just one of the aspect that are that are missing from SSN ontology is that we can't use it to modeling multimedia data and there's no precise detail on how to model multimedia sensor there is a, a core concept called sensor but we can't model we can't say that this sensor is multimedia or not is it a audio sensor or is it a video sensor is it an image or is it what this you cannot, uh, cannot specify it in it's not proposed in the ontology? Uh, w, uh, uh, in W3C uh, consortium proposed that this one so should be application specific part uh -huh. but in our opinion with okay, multimedia sensor network is also generic it's not application specific mm -hmm. so we should have some mm -hmm. some so precise detail idea. yeah so basically when, the, when they say multimedia sensor network is application specific no it's not true mm -hmm. it could be generic too. Uh, another uh, second group of work, uh, multimedia data modeling and retrieval. In short, in this this work, they propose a language for retrieving multimedia data. Some some of the language are SQL based. Some of the language are SparkQL based. But most of them, they work. They decide their study based on MPEG seven based approach. MPEG seven based approach. In short, MPEG seven is a standard for indexing multimedia data. In MPEG-7 proposed that multimedia data need to be indexed according to its low-level feature. For example, to index one image, we say that this image has this uh, has uh, has this has some certain structure of color, has a contour, has a has a contour descriptor, has a histo color histogram descriptor, and after that we can map this low-level feature to the semantic information later on. That's why we have several work that propose MPEG-7 based ontology. So good thing about this MPEG-7 ontology is that we can model multimedia sensor well, but just that they, these work alone cannot be used in modeling sensor network. They, they don't have any aspect of a modeling sensor network or complex event. And for complex event processing engine, okay, the existing work there, they for complex event processing engine work, they mostly they focus on business, business monitoring application, and each work they propose language in three different style. Most uh, uh, some some propose in event condition action style, some propose in by using SQL or SparkQL style, some using by logic language style. But okay, regardless the style, most of them propose a same set of operator for modeling event so in short for modeling complex event there is a uh, one one main work that most of the study follows called allen interval algebra allen Al interval algebra proposed that for regardless any kind of event any kind of temporal duration there are uh 10 type of relation for example this one event a precedes event b or event b precedes by event a a need B or B need met by A, for example, we have we have precede, precede by, overlap, overlap by, contain, during, start, start by, finish, finish by, meet, met by, and then equal. These, these are set of events that are mostly used in existing work on complex event processing. A quick summary that, okay, in for every, for every kind of uh, related category, okay, from the, the, the sensor network modeling, work they, they can do they can use well for modeling struct infrastructure of sensor network but they cannot cover the other aspect. So each work work do well in their own aspect but there are no existing work that cover everything for processing complex event in multimedia sensor network. That's why in my proposal I propose uh, a new framework so called CMIT framework. CMIT framework the core part of CMIT framework is that the idea is that we we leave low level data manipulation to be always the same regardless application domain. And for the higher level part for semantic translation, event definition part, we propose a language for user to define what they want to detect. That's why so in, in this framework we have four main components. The first core component is the, the repository part. For the repository part, we choose to adopt ontology-based approach. 
So we propose a new ontology for modeling multimedia sensor for modeling multimedia sensor network. The ontology so called MSSN onto which will be introduced later in the presentation. And the the ontology alone it, it it will be a little bit too low level. So we need a high level language for user to use. The high level language for user to use is called CIMIT language. CIMIT language for user to define what event that they would like to detect. And after that we have the core event processing engine that take all the definition, all the all the all the query, all the event model provided by the user. And after that the system will pre process pre process all the incoming sensor data stream and pass to the complex event processing engine and report it to the user directly. So in short from this framework consists of four main module and among these four main module there are three three core components. First the first is the ontology. Second is the language. Third component is the processing engine, which includes the data preprocessor, data preprocessor and event detection engine. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yep. Uh, uh, is a, uh, a video stream one of your inputs? Yes. Uh, we call sensor data stream to be just to be general, but it can be either scalar or or multimedia. So Doesn't matter. In that case, Uh, basically, user need to need to provide event structure first by using the CMIT language. Install it first, and then the, the the engine will initialize the detection system according to the predefined event structure. So basically, the the system need to know first that we have video sensor, and here is the event that we would like to detect, and then everything are automatic after. Yeah, but, but in, in that case, it means that on the low-level part, we know that we have CCTV camera. And from the CCTV camera, we want to detect car well, from no. the CCTV camera. Yes, but I, I, think, I think the question is that the detection, the actual detection in the yeah. image is done at a previous level. You are just, uh, I mean, your system, the, the entry of your system is basic event, mm -hmm. atomic event, yeah. and you are detecting um, I mean, uh, complex event, but mm -hmm. uh, the actual detection, for example, in this case of, of the car, mm -hmm. is done at a previous level. No, is it? no, 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 no. No, everything is done here. So basically, <coughs> there are there are from high level to low level. So when we the event that you say is more or less complex event, and from the complex event, there are from complex event structure, there are small atomic event and some some smaller atomic event. Some is scalar. But some is multimedia. But if the sensor is able to make some detection, why shouldn't you use it? If the camera is able to detect, <laughs> uh, I mean, if, uh, if I uh, if to the camera what itself, you say, yeah, uh, what, uh, what people were saying before, if the camera itself is able uh, to... You mean that if the detect if the yeah. event can, or if the detection engine yeah. is already M. Yeah, so, so is it oh, possible in, in your system to uh -huh. receive a stream of events and not a stream of... Uh, of, uh, then, then stream, in, in that case, events. in that case, it depends on on the way we model. In that case, in this system, I would model it as a scalar sensor, mm. even though it is mm. a video camera, but it produces either the detection as a yes or no. So that's a scalar sensor, even though it detects based on multimedia. Uh, it can be it can be more complex. So when that. when I say multimedia sensor stream, I I assume that the stream, the incoming stream, is a raw video stream, or is a raw audio stream. And, and how do you The integration part is uh, the actually I plan to introduce it later in the work, but more, but more, mostly the, I can say quickly here we have we integrate it as a plugin style, either embed in the system directly. But if that function doesn't exist, we we connect to it by using REST API to to the to the we have like a cloud of event detection function. 
something like that. So if we, when we have that function on our own, we use it. But if we don't, we go to the the, the cloud-based function. So in the event model, for example, you can define you can define your model and also spe uh, specify the the routine or the algorithm the the the, syst the system and the detection uh, application you want to use. Is it possible for the user to say, well, I will, I want to detect a face, for example, face recognition, yeah. and I want the system to use this uh, this uh, this approach. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can provide the you provide the API. API so for, for for that case, we we can for for what you say, we can skip to the example something like. For example, we we can this we can define first that we have one video sensor. For observe, uh, observing says, and after that we have, we have a condition like a condition called face detection. This condition use face camera, and using a function called face detection function. And as a user, I can provide the face detection. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Just just uh, just keep it to answer the question because that 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 part is. So so in your system, everything is uh, everything is in audio or. It's ontology based framework, so so low level low level is is R uh, to be precise O W L. It's R it's R W L uh, it's R D F but written in ontology web language in L in L yeah. Okay, but uh, so the you never represent the pixels in L. Right? Hmm? You never represent the pixels in L. The pixels are in the image screen. That's why for that's why we propose an ontology called multimedia uh, M S is an onto. And this ontology can can model location, can model set of location, and can model can model multimedia sensor, and can also model low level multimedia data. The method how it can model low level multimedia data is based on low level feature. Just to answer your question directly, something like we have one video sensor, video sensor made an observation. And this uh, this this uh, this observation is one one media file. One media file is consists of one long temporal segment. One long temporal segment because video is a temporal segment. And temporal segment has start time of zero until this, until uh, something like this one duration one hundred eighty seconds. And after that, within this temporal sec mm, long temporal segment, we can. Decompose into low level segment from the spatial segment. Spatial segment to pinpoint one frame inside the video, and in that frame, it has this face descriptor. So, it, so in detail, we, we don't we don't model the pixel directly. We extract low level data, low level feature first, and index it into ontology. So most likely, we okay. Given a video, we create a metadata according to MPEG seven and store it as. The MS and MS is an onto. But some semantic can be captured in, in MPEG twenty one. Unfortunately, Aral is not here. It's his it's cup yeah. of tea. So you yeah yeah there 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 agree agree. Agree that there are so some. Is it compatible with MPEG twenty one this or the MPEG digital MPEG item specification which is provided uh, which is uh, MPEG the core? I, I haven't take a look at MPEG twenty one yet, Ray. But but from this one, the idea is from from low level feature, it can map later with the semantic information. Yes. Yes. I agree. look at MPEG twenty one. Uh, ah. Ask Aral. Ah. Ah. He was part of the author of the. Ah. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> I, I, I didn't take a look at MPEG twenty one. Twenty minutes. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the uh, the uh, yeah, you have a lot of slides. Yes. So maybe you have to do to. to, to so maybe I'll, I'll I'll skip it to to the yeah. to, to 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 the part that everyone is no, most yeah, likely yeah, interesting. Just focus Actually, on what is the most important for you. Okay. Yeah. For which then you you want some feedback from us? Uh, for for the ontology. Okay. The, okay. Let me go back to the to to the infrastructure first. So basically, there the core the main core. The main core contribution is, uh, repeat again, is the ontology, the language, and the, the engine. So the idea of the ontology is that the ontology, as to answer your question about how the ontology can model multimedia data, basically we extract low-level feature from the multimedia data first and model it as an ontology, and after that we map it to the 
application domain later by using ether uh, manual alignment or using the language. The manual alignment approach we test it with, with the laboratory project called Hit2Gap, Gap, Hit to Gap, which is the, the work of, of our laboratory on, on the smart building project. And also my own prototype called uh, in um, a smart meeting room prototype, which is in, in this work we have a corpus. We have a corpus of um, a preview corpus of a meeting room data, which consists of a set of video, audio, microphone, and whiteboard, thing like that. And from this one, I try to apply MSS and on tour on it to try to detect some events. And we have a prototype. A prototype for 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 detecting that that how MSN and on tour can be used. Basically, okay, we pre we pre index everything, and we model event by using SparkQL language, by hard coding SparkQL language first before because we assume that when uh, we we try to validate this ontology without using the language, yes. So in this case, we, we, we are forced to use only SparkQL. And the result is that, okay, the, the, we, we get a satisfact, uh, we, we get a good result of the use of using this ontology inside our prototype. Can you, uh, uh, can you I should skip. Yeah. See the accuracy? Mm -hmm. The accuracy, basically in this work we use uh, an un, untrained face detection function and train feature extra uh, feature recognition function, but we can still have a very good event detection result. Something like brainstorming event. Brainstorming event. How I define it? I define it as an event where more than three people discuss something nonstop for a, for a considerable period of time, where we get a very good as measure. Mm -hmm. And we have some event that is not the detection result is not so good. Something like uh, changing to another presentation, something like this. Is, I define this event as when when the presenter in front of the camera change because of the the corpus data is not really the video is not really quite good, and the sound is not really quite good. So that's why we have a little bit of less as measure. But the gen the, the general the idea is that we can model. What are the causes of the, of the bad results? Is, uh, the, the bad results come from untrained detection function, not the ontology. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, related to the sensors. The not sensor. related to the sensor itself. No, not related to the sensor itself, but most uh, likely that what we to try to show is to that... To the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, method, uh, the methods for analyzing the, the, stream, the video stream. Because I'm surprised by... For example, by the fact that the participant participants leaving their, their seats, uh, you have a recall of 0 0.06. Because the video is only with so it's strange with because the it video. It seems very difficult to uh, analyze that somebody is leaving a seat. I, I think. If, if the detection function is so if the detection no, function that's is that's very bad, so that's why my feeling was that it was not a, not a matter of. No, just during, during the, this experiment, the, the face detection function detects shares of face all the time. That's why. <laughs> Because we use an un untrained face detection function, mm -hmm. but what what the idea of this mm. one? Uh, just yeah. So the slide, the, the idea of this experiment is that even though the even detect one face recognition function alone is not really good enough, we can combine it with multiple sensor to have mm -hmm. better accuracy. Something like the participant participant leave their seat, we only use one camera mm -hmm. to detect it, so it's not really a, a, a complex event that combine mm. multiple sensors. Mm. But when we combine multiple sensors together, some event like brainstorming, we can have a really good accuracy. Mm. Using the active board, something like when, when the presenter writes something mm. on the board. Mm. Because actually I was wondering what, we, you, what you want to, to show, uh, to demonstrate on this slide. Because it's difficult to, to analyze uh, what are the the causes yeah, because uh, the, the, the content is <laughs> long. Uh, I'm, so I'm in the middle of it, trying to, is it try a to of pick the something. CD or is it the content of? Uh, uh -huh. Is it the problem of the sensor? Is it the problem of it's the, the problem detection of function? Detection function. Mm -hmm. Because we use off-the-shelf function directly, mm -hmm. and uh, some, something not so trained. Mm -hmm. How do you merge different uh, detection results, uh, especially if they are oh. conflicting? Excuse me. Oh, well, camera one detects face. Mm -hmm. Camera two detects no face. Camera three detects face. What is the result? Uh, that it, 
it depends on this one. This the this decision is up to user according to the definition. So user need to define this logic on their own. That is the um, this event mean camera one detect face, camera two detect nothing, something like that. Okay, so I have to hard code uh, in the ontology if the not really in the ontology. We the have language a language. Yeah. We have a language for defining event. The so, the so there is no sense of fusion in that sense that the sensor that there, there are no sense of uh, automatic for that there, there no 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 intelligent sense because the, the main scope of this work is to allow user to define the logic of detecting events on their own and from that we can develop it further maybe according to your suggest suggestion for example because that part that that aspect that you said the way we, we discussed about it but first step is we need to to allow user to define <coughs> the even pattern first Mm -hmm. But it's true that one event can be defined in multiple ways. Actually, you wanted to have something like SQL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You write your query. If your query yeah. is, is okay, then it works. If, if your query is wrong, yeah. then it works. Yeah, something like yeah. The, 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 the event called uh, event call people people in the room feeling hot means that, okay, we detect a face yeah. at this table and we take <laughs> high temperature sensor at the same table, something like that. So the, the second part of the of the of, of the contribution is the language itself. Is the language itself and the language itself allow user to define the infrastructure of the of the room on their own and also define atomic event, define complex event on their own and the and the language itself we have two version we have two serialized version we have uh, we have one serialized version in JSON form in JSON form just in case some user prefer the, to, to use it with web semantics so just 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 a matter of API. Is it then JSON LD or JSON? Just JSON. Just JSON. Just JSON and we verify the compactness of the JSON because okay we have Simit language, we have JSON version, but the low level low level part is still the ontology is still MSS ontology. It's still our own VL. So it will need to be the, the, the system work by translate the language into SparkQL. So we, are, we, we create, we, we conduct some case of compactness. We verify that, okay, when we have this, some specific number of sensors, uh, some specific of our uh, events, some, spec some specific of set of atomic event condition, we have something like we have 20 locations, 20 sensors, 20 atomic events, 20 complex events. By using SparkQL, we use this amount of token to model it. Token refer to uh, a non-breaking space character inside the query. We, we use this number amount of token. And by using the CMIT language, the, the size that user need to write reduced by into this, in JSON video into this, and here's the compactness percentage. Shouldn't I didn't catch what you mean by token here in the Token, uh, just because in, 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 in this, this test of, ex of experiment, we just would like to demonstrate that by using CMIT language, it helps user to reduce the need of writing Spark a very long, long, long Spark QL query. Mm. So we, we count the number of token. Token refer to a non-breaking space in, inside the query, something like in SQL, for example, select. Something like, like this, we count this as one token. And this 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 board is this board text is a second token. This is third, fourth, fifth, for example. Okay. <laughs> and so in the in the complex event pro it's in the complex event uh, definition that you can uh, specify the way you merge uh, information as a yeah yeah. And where is it? It's, uh, so basically, the the event we we propose an an event operator we propose two operator for overlaps and sequence. So basically we can propose that whether two event two atomic event is overlap with each other or it followed by each the, other. The meaning of Allen? Allen? Yeah, yeah. In the sense of Allen, yeah. And so the the merging of information, how is it? How can you the merging in, uh, is according to the statement. Mm. Yeah, I have limit time that I can't go through I have yeah, to yeah, yeah. skip so uh, a lot of slides so sorry mm. so the, the, the information is a little bit okay. disconnected. Uh -huh. But okay, so because I'm running out of time, let me show you the, the, the final part where how, how the framework process all the language to detect some event. 
the framework uh, to do that the, there are several algorithm but but in short we uh, uh, develop uh, an engine called GST Simit, an abbreviation of G streamer for complex event modeling detection. Just quickly what is G streamer? G streamer is a pipeline based framework for manipulating multimedia data in every Linux platform. So why I use G streamer framework because G streamer framework can already work for be used for decoding every kind of multimedia content and extracting low level feature of lots of kind of multimedia content. So by using GStreamer, we can automate all the all the pre-processing part and all the decoding part and we can work directly on the complex event processing part. So basically in short, the framework take the user define event structure <coughs> and develop a GStreamer event pipeline for detecting part. So the, the, the pipeline consists of three sections in general. Input handling part, where we have where we have the part for handling the, the source input. Second part for handling multimedia data decoding. And the third part for handling atomic event detection. Third part for handling complex event detection. And finally, the same part for same part referring is a streamer term for referring for the endpoint referring to how to report to the user. For example, an event, an event, the case where we imagine we have one raw video stream, one, one raw video stream, one sensor stream, and one, one computer, one, one, stream, one list of process list, a list of process detecting from computer, and then we have a list of uh, a stream of temperature sensor data stream. And the event that we want to detect is whether User, user, uh, user are working while the temperature is too hot. So first of all, we have raw video stream. Raw video stream are being decoded and passed to an atomic event detection function, a predefined atomic event de condition element for detection for detecting. And then on the other side, in parallel, we have a list of uh, as I know, a stream of process of a stream of process this coming from computer sensor this one go to atomic event con uh, detection function directly because it's scalar data it doesn't need required to be decoded and after these two are combined and merged together according to an a streamer element that I developed myself called CIMIT operator for merging the detection of this and this all together so this is where the merge where, where the merge happen mm -hmm. the merge happen according to the language and that language from that language we construct a pipeline for detecting. So basically, the, the dynamic adaptation for doesn't happen. So everything is hard code according to user predefined language. So from the user submit language, we construct a pipeline, and we use a GStreamer because all the all the we can bypass all the multimedia data handling, decoding, low level feature pre processing. This this part are done automatically by GStreamer. So I propose the four more event, four more elements for GStreamer for detecting atomic event, operator for merging data into complex event, and then event sync for report the result. And then I will to verify the this, the GST submit framework. I run this framework in a simulate in a simulation in a simulate in in a simulate in a simulate office scenario. And in the simulation, we have four sensor. We have video sensor. We have we have four. Uh, we have video sensor. We have computer sensor. We have temperature sensor. We have light sensor. And we test it with uh, with a set of statement. Let's say the, the, the statement, the predefined statement that I use. And then we try to run the simulation for ten minutes by running it with two hundred sensor, three hundred sensor, three hundred. You Basically, we try to increase the number of sensors to be a lot. So you, you simulate the video camera or you, you it's yeah, a video I stream or it's after the video stream? And I, I simulate the video stream by alternating the image. So basically, just to simulate the, the video stream, <coughs> how to do it, I just create a simulation, uh, create a simulate sensor that keep randomly, randomly put an image, feed an image to the system. Mm -hmm. Why I work on simulation? Because because uh, we would like to do stress test. Mm -hmm. 
we would like to have thousand sensor, ten thousand sensor, something like that. And the result show that show that we are uh, in all case the detection latency is less than one second. But the, are you are you sure that the, the rendered image? Uh, uh, it, the the random event are supposed to generate atomic event. Supposed to be put for, for detecting atomic event by using phase detection function. Okay, and but uh, the, the whole point of, the, of your framework is to create complex events out of these events. Yes. Now, complex event doesn't mean the latency need to be long. The complex event just refer to an event that we use multiple sensors join together to detect events. But there, isn't there some reasoning process at some point in the uh, Excuse me. Some some reasoning or some some uh, reasoning no. process that happen in atomic event condition. So, so element, yeah. So basically, the, if you're looking for something like the multimedia reasoning, something machine learning, that part we assume that is a plug-in, a very pre-developed plug-in. So that one is used for detecting atomic events. So that one we assume is a black box. The de detection function we assume is a black box that is accessible to the atomic event condition element. So the complex event constructing part, we, we work on it in the sense of spatial-temporal aspect only. Something like, okay, first we detect several atomic event, and we try to combine these atomic event together, either spatially or temporally, by using temporal, uh -huh, by using a uh, spatial temporal operator. No, 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 continue. Uh -huh. Is your uh, framework based on the idea that you have to uh, I uh, the, the, the language design is inspired from Esper and EP Spark QL. I, I, I took some aspect from it and I took some aspect from, from the other work called Etalist. And several, so basically, I review all the language, all the parts together. And the, the uh, a of mine, uh, uh, Sorry. Uh, was developed by a Oh, I don't understand the question, sorry. Uh, you, you could compare your framework yeah. with an alternative approach where all the multimeter preprocessing is done uh, externally um, and the results of this preprocessing is uh, feeding. Uh, 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 ah, I understand. Now. Yeah, yeah. It, it uh, could so be done, but just, just a matter of time limit. That's why I haven't done yet, but that will be done in future study for sure. Because we get a feedback from, from the publication that we sent that they would like to see <coughs> the comparison between our system and some existing approach. Even though existing approach doesn't have multimedia aspect, but we can do it externally and put and feed it in and we can compare it. But so, so right now, right now we haven't done it yet, but we only refer to the white paper of Esper. That say that okay, Esper they for all the all the event detect function and all the the speed of Esper is at microsecond unit. It's at microsecond unit, and in our case, it's millisecond unit. But okay, but it's okay because in our case, we can support multimedia detection case. That's the only this discussion that we did for now. But that part will will be done for sure in future work. Yeah. But oh, nice that you you your coworker of Etalis. <laughs> That's why I, I I refer a lot to Etalis paper actually. Uh, in some part, I took a lot of aspect from Etalis. Yeah. Sorry, the work is long. I have to <laughs> skip a lot of parts. Or the organization. I'm, I'm trying to organize the structure for the Sutanongs, but I already tried to cut some stuff out, but it's already 58 slides. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I didn't know. Yeah. But you can. 
Yeah. Do it. Then at five more minutes. Ah, yeah. That's okay. Just, just, uh, just. Maybe questions. Question, yeah. Huh? Here for the question. Just for <coughs> in your experimental setup. So, in the set, so it goes on the x axis, yeah. So. Actually, I have so three set of exper experiments set up, but I, I, I didn't show everything yet because the, the, the slide is already too long. This set of experiment, this, this, set, ex this set of experiment that I put on the slide is aim to show that to, to test that if we increase a lot of sen uh, in, in the, if we have a lot of amount of sensor, how, uh, what will be the effect? What will be the result? So basically, we for this set of experiment, we, tr we aim to test the case where we have a lot large amount of sensor. Mm -hmm. Is the engine can cope with can the engine cope with it? But I, I didn't I didn't get the, um, the first point. So uh -huh. that you 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 run one hundred simulations and you s you argue that this represents a scenario with two hundred sensors. So I don't I didn't catch it. Why? Uh, the simulation even <laughs> if in one simulation there are two sensors, why 100 simulation? Uh, uh, imagine, a a imagine, imagine a room. Imagine a room. Imagine a room with two sensor installed. Yeah. A room with two sensor installed, and we have not hundred of that room. Then we have two hundred sensor. So one simulation yeah, instead is but one sensor. Are, are one related. Person. I mean, they are decorrelated. Hmm? Ah, no, no, no. They are decorrelated. So it's decorrelated. not like if there were two hundred sensors in the same room. Uh not because we not can imagine that yeah. if there are much more sensors in the but, but everything go to the same detection engine just to yeah. with the idea we plan to overload the detection engine yeah but i well maybe I, i'm wrong but I, I can imagine that if the instances are completely separated then there is nothing to detect in common no that so within the same within the same a room with within the same room the sensor is linked but yeah. across the room the sensor yeah. doesn't link yeah so the the detection of of um, complex uh, complex event or the this why we, we have different between uh, is different from uh, mm -hmm. from 100 rooms separated rooms mm -hmm. to one room with 200 uh, 200 sensors uh that that could be uh, but, 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 but mathematically they are they are the same one room with uh, 100 sensors i don't know if it makes sense but one, one uh, area with 200 sensors actually one room with 200 sensor no it, doesn't. it could be done but but it one is, uh, event one complex event that require 200 sensor that doesn't yeah, make sense no, no, yeah. no, because from from in our in the, the work in in this work the the most number of operator that i put in one event in one event is four but even here you, can, you cannot you cannot have that uh, because we, be, too, too we have several cases, but I cut it out just to be concise because this is the same time I uh, should show everything. Sorry. Uh -huh. We have three set of experiment. First set of experiment that we, we keep the number of sensor to be minimal in the same room, keep increasing number of room. And the second set of experiment is that we 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 increase the number of the operator. We increase number of sensor in one. So basically, we we complicate. We we, we make the the event the, the event structure to be more complicated. Mm -hmm. As what you say, but I I I don't agree that we should add up to two hundred mm. sensor in one event in one room. Okay, but in one event, no. Mm, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. But I was uh, just wondering if uh, if you have well, not in a room, but if you have a bigger space. And many, many different, uh, many different sensors. Then you can imagine that two sensors, three sensors, or four sensors, or uh, can detect something, or perhaps, uh, or some kind of dynamic. Somebody is moving from this place to this place. Mm, that part is about the just to do even yeah. processing. That that's the other. That's the other thing. Okay. Is this so part this we assume is everything is centralized, but it's just in one room with two hundred sensors. <coughs> It doesn't matter as long, okay, in one room with 200 sensors, but we can pick only three or four sensors for, for one event structure. Mm -hmm. and did you get some feedback from you, from you, from some users uh, regarding the, um, the uh, did flexibility this work, of did your this work language? Hasn't been published. The language? No, the, no the, the, the development hasn't been published yet. It's still in unstable prototype version. No, so I my question was about the language. 
uh, we haven't tasted with the real user yet. But yeah, Kurt, uh, any more questions? Oh, is it?